I'm going to show you guys how to make a classic apple pie in a healthier way. Organic ingredients, grass-fed butter, pasture-raised eggs, the highest quality that most people have access to. And not only are the nutritional components of this pie going to be much healthier, you'll also feel a whole lot better when you eat this pie. You know, you might not actually pass out on the couch. So let's go over those ingredients. We're going to do a near classic pie crust with a little bit of a twist. Of course, we have organic flour, sea salt. I'm using nature's glucose as opposed to regular sugar. This takes stress off the body's enzymes. It's healthier for you overall. And we have some grass-fed butter and milk that's getting really, really cold in the freezer. For the filling, I'm using golden delicious apples. What I would do is just get whatever organic apple is the most affordable at the grocery store. And in my experience, uh, Fuji, Honeycrisp, Golden Delicious all taste pretty good, but there are some apples you might wanna stay away from. Uh, we have some lemons to juice uh, to put on this, add some acidity and preserve the color. Uh, the classic spices, cinnamon and nutmeg, and we're gonna add nature's glucose to the pie filling as well as the sweetener. Uh, the eggs here are simply for an egg wash on the top of the pie, which, you know, if you are allergic to eggs, you don't really have to do. Uh, these are just some stuff I picked up from my local supermarket. I think they're organic, uh, soy free, which is better than what most people are eating. In the freezer, I put some milk in here about half an hour ago to get it really, really cold. And usually people add ice water to their pie. I like using milk instead. I think it adds a little more flavor, a little more nutrition, some B vitamins. And more importantly, we have some very cold butter in here. So I took two blocks of butter, diced it up kind of small. You could definitely go smaller than this. And this has been in the freezer a couple hours. So it's really rock hard. You know, half of this will be for the top crust, half of this will be for the bottom crust. Food processor is by far the easiest way to make pie crust. So if you don't have this, you're gonna be doing it on your countertop by hand. It's gonna be a little messy. It can help to put gloves on because when you start handling this dough, there's less heat transfer between your hands and the dough and we wanna keep the butter as cold as possible. So first we'll measure out 300 grams of flour. So I'm using organic all-purpose flour. It's gonna give this the most consistent classic apple pie taste. Of course you could use einkorn wheat, heirloom grains, uh, whatever you have access to that you deem adequate for your diet. Okay. And since we have to make two pie crusts, I'm actually gonna measure it out again. In each of these we want a quarter teaspoon of salt. Typically, you would take your quarter cup of sugar, blitz it up in here just to incorporate it before you start putting the butter in. I'm gonna see how this goes. I'm a little concerned about putting it in with the frozen butter because then this might just clump up. So we want about a quarter cup of sugar. That looks about right. It's about a quarter cup. Now, this nature's glucose is not nearly as sweet as typical sugar because glucose has a much milder flavor. So you could even add double or triple the amount and it's still might not be as sweet. So this butter is actually the Finlandia that we have on Frankie's free range meat. Conveniently, it's 227 grams per block, which is the precise amount you need for each of these pie crusts. That being said, I put two of these on the tray, so we still have to weigh it out. All right, 226, perfect. So we have the flour, sugar, butter, and salt in the mixer. I have my ice cold milk on standby, and we're gonna start blitzing this up and then pouring the milk in. So it went for about 10 seconds. It sounds really, really smooth. And this is a perfect texture. You can't get more textbook than this. We have the flakes of butter. It's like a mild sand. So everything's really nicely incorporated. Make sure you shake up your milk, especially if it's raw, there'll be some cream at the top. Now I'm gonna eyeball about a quarter cup, but you wanna be really, really careful with this because if you add too much, you're gonna ruin the dough. And what we're looking for is, it's gonna come together in one mass. So that's about a quarter cup. And now you see it's coming together. It kind of stopped mixing, put a little more. Uh, so this is about the texture we want. It's still kind of dry. You can see chunks of butter in here. It's really, really cold. And you know you're making recipes right generally when it's hard to work with the material, biscuits, pie dough, it's all really a nightmare. This dough in the parchment paper. It's a little sticky, I think that's because of the nature's glucose. Now I'm gonna fold this up and this is gonna go in the freezer to stay really cold. And then we'll make the other pie dough, put that in the freezer and they'll both chill out while we're making the filling. The same thing, 
Just fold it up, pop it in the freezer. Most of the prep work left is to just peel, core, and dice these apples, juice the lemons, and then we'll be ready to saute them. Apple core is probably something I don't recommend people buy because it's the only time I've ever really injured myself in the kitchen. I was trying to push the, the piece of the apple out and I cut my thumb like halfway down here. So not good, lesson learned. So wiggle down nice to the core. And then when you move on to the next apple, don't worry about taking this core out because you're not gonna get it out. Just move on to the next apple, pops right out. So we core the apples like that. After the apples are cored, it's much easier to peel because you can kind of just go over the top like that. So I'm actually gonna squeeze the lemons to get the juice so I can put these apple slices in them without getting brown and discolored. Quarter cup of lemon juice is about two whole lemons. I'm really simple, we just try to get this in uniform dices. So peeled apple, cored, I cut it directly in half, and then we'll go lengthwise, maybe four slices, and then other way, four slices, or just two slices. And then we have some nice diced apple, really simple and easy to cut. So probably need seven to eight apples for the filling, so we'll do that. Apples are all sliced up, ready to go. I have two pans on pretty high heat, a quarter pound of butter in the big pan, about two tablespoons in the small pan. And then I'm gonna use this butter to grease my glass pie dish. In here, we're gonna add a little bit of flour to make a roux. That's gonna be used to thicken the pie filling. Uh, normally, you may see people use cornstarch, but I think organic flour and grass-fed butter is a lot healthier. So I'm basically just eyeballing equal parts flour and butter. And this is just gonna cook for about five minutes on a medium heat to get rid of that flour flavor. The butter's all melted in the middle pan. We're gonna add our apples and lemon juice. And then you want three quarters of a cup of sugar. So I'm gonna add about a cup of nature's glucose because it's not as sweet. So the apples need to saute for 10 to 15 minutes. We want them to still be a little bit firm and we're not exactly trying to like super caramelize them because this is gonna get cooked in the oven. Now while all that stuff's going, I'm gonna take maybe two teaspoons of cinnamon a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. I'm gonna add about a quarter teaspoon of salt. So this is gonna be our seasoning once the apples are done sauteing. So the roux's been going for a few minutes, a little brown, nice and caramelized, can take it off the heat. We can also get our egg wash ready. So we're just gonna do one egg, tiny splash of milk. Then you wanna add a tiny bit of sugar. In this case, we'll add the glucose and we'll just stir this up. You have some leftover of this, make some French toast the next day. Or while you're cooking this stupid pie because it takes so long. All right, apples have been going almost about 10 minutes. They're getting soft, very aromatic. As you can see, there's a lot of liquid and juice that has rendered out of these apples. So we're gonna add in our roux. And if you just kept the apples in here and reduced the liquid all the way, you would have some very, very mushy overcooked apples that would not really give you a texture or a crisp in the pie. The roux does a good job of thickening this up. The cornstarch doesn't. Granted, the roux is a little more work. You know, if you had a lot of liquid at the bottom, you strain this, let the liquid seep through, put that back in the pan, let it boil for a few minutes, simmer for a few minutes, and reduce it. Since we don't have to do that, we need this to cool off. Otherwise, it will just melt to the bottom of the pie crust, basically. So I'm put this on a sheet tray. If you have room in your freezer, fridge, you could pop this in there. It'll cool it off even quicker. Or it's practically December now. Just put this outside on your patio. And when I touch these apples, still pretty firm, which is good because, you know, you bake this for 45 minutes, they're going to get a little softer. So we'll let this hang out in the fridge for about half an hour. Hopefully that fits. So we got one of our pie doughs out of the freezer. Put some flour down, some flour on the rolling pin. I'm going to gently start rolling this out. And the main concern here is that, you know, we have these cracks and it's breaking. If it cracks and it breaks too much, then it's kind of hard to get a nice thin circular piece of dough. So I'm just rolling it out. Then I'm kind of patting those corners that split back together. I don't think this is big enough for my pie crust, but it's starting to split a lot. So we'll test it. We just plopped it in there. It looks okay. And I'm just gently making sure there's no air in here, just patting the dough in nice. So you have two options here. We, we can roll this out, cut it into strips and do a lattice, or you could just roll it out and place it on top. It's, it's really up to you. 
Uh, we'll see how this rolls out, and then we'll make a decision. Honestly, if someone sells like organic pie crust in Whole Foods, you probably cut out 90% <laughs> of the work on this recipe. What would the Amish charge for a pie like this? Probably like 40 or 50 bucks. And I'm cutting through most of this, but it probably takes me about you know, five to seven minutes per, per dough. I'm rolling, trying to roll it reasonably even, making sure the thickness is the same. I go in, I, I kind of fix up. What I messed up, flip it over, fix up the other side, and then we'll try to even it out some more. So for the lattice, we need strips that are approximately the diameter of the pie. I'll try to cut a few here, and then we can always reform the dough and, and roll it out again. So we have some of the lattice cut, and we're going to get our pie filling and put it in the crust. So this is still a tiny bit warm, but it's cooled off, so it's good to go in here. You want to kind of get this kind of packed in there nice and even. So now with the strips, basically, hope that it doesn't fall apart completely. Now once I put the lattice on here, there's no going back. See, this is falling apart here, it's getting too warm. As I move this dough, there's a pretty good chance that, you know, if I pull this back to put a lattice in, it might break, which, which we'll just have to deal with. This is basically melting, so that's not good. Now the dough is a lot easier to handle when it's warmed up, but it tears apart. So now with this lattice, you fold up every other, see it's falling apart, every other strip halfway, and we'll try to honestly just form this back together if we can. So every other strip goes up halfway, and then you put this here. What you're supposed to do is you fold the strips back. You fold this over, you fold this one back over, you fold this one back over, you fold this one back over, and then the strip that you didn't lift up, you pick that one up, and then you do the next strip, you fold those sides over, and then the, uh, the same thing, you're supposed to fold this one back. So that's our ghetto lattice, so kind of just pressing the ends of the pie crust down and when you push when you push the edges of the, the crust it should almost like fall and rip off when you push them against the, the pie tin you're using. But this is going to go in the oven at 375 for around 45 minutes. Almost forgot our egg wash so I like using my hands here. Just get a little bit on my fingers and just rub it over the top. The edges of this apple pie might crisp up and burn a little bit, but you know I don't put aluminum foil on anything because it's it's toxic. So if you can get like a ring or just maybe cut up some parchment paper, I'm not going to bother. 375. Probably take about 45 minutes. I'll put this in the lower part of the oven so the top doesn't get too brown. So the pie has been in the oven about 50 minutes. I let it go a little longer because it looked like the bottom needed more time. Doesn't that look delicious? Definitely looks a lot better uh, even with the lattice messed up when it's cooked. Now this really has to cool off for at least five, six, seven hours, maybe even in the fridge. Overnight is best so that the filling and everything can set. So the apple pie has been sitting in the freezer for about five hours now, so it should be pretty set up. It still might be a little loose in the middle, but uh, we can cut into it and see what it looks like. Don't drop the pie or I'll be mad at you. There's the pie. I, I still actually feel a little bit of warmth on the bottom. I actually want to weigh this to see how much it is. So this weighs eight and a half pounds. I'm assuming the, the glass dish is no more than a pound and a half. So this is well over a six pound apple Should pie. If you don't let this set up for a day or two, it's a little bit harder to take out, but that's still okay. Do I keep going? Look at this goodness. Mmm. It's pretty good. So this is really, really classic. It's not too sweet. You get subtle notes of everything. The apples are nice and firm. The crust is nice. So much for my, so much for my diet. Mm. So good. The filling itself, mm. the apples are still a little firm, but they're nice and soft. Mm. And you really get that pop of apple flavor. So from a nutritional perspective, it's really a lot of caloric energy and some fat soluble vitamins because you know we used so much butter in this 
there's a lot of carbohydrate and really, really great recipe to stay warm, mm. keep some weight on, and you also feel pretty good after eating this because it is made with all organic, high quality ingredients. This is much better than McDonald's apple pie. So definitely try out this recipe, guys. Mm. If you put in a little bit of extra money with ingredients, time and effort making the pie, mm. really, really, really delicious. Mm.